Despite what they'd like you to believe, documentaries aren't always as well-researched and reliable as they seem. Personal agendas, manipulated facts, and occasionally totally incorrect statistics can often go unnoticed by unsuspecting audiences. But after this video, you'll be able to stop yourself from getting fooled. From questionable claims about climate change to supposedly deadly diets, let's explore some of the unexpected ways these popular documentaries lied to you. Amazing. Number 10. Disney's Dark Secret In the Arctic regions of the world, small, mouse-like rodents called lemmings can be found. According to an enduring urban legend, lemmings' instinct to migrate, no matter the direction or obstacles, often result in fatal mishaps for the rodents, specifically leaping off of cliffs together, committing accidental suicide en masse. A famous scene in Disney's 1958 nature documentary, White Wilderness, played heavily into this misconception. The film shows the lemmings leaping to their collective deaths by either trauma or drowning as they plunge into the Arctic Sea. However, this famous footage was later discovered to be faked. The film crew placed some lemmings on a turntable which created the illusion of great numbers of lemmings barreling seaward. The lemmings, which had been imported to Canada from their native Arctic habitats for the shoot, were then herded off the cliff by the crew for cinematic effect. Sadly, while the footage was faked, the fate of the poor lemmings was not. To top it all off, it wasn't even the sea that they fell into. It was a river in Alberta. How Mickey could do this to his rodent brethren, I'll never know. Number 9. What the Health? Whether obvious or not, most documentaries have an agenda. Selecting what's shown and what's left out will inevitably be tailored to fit the overall message or emotional aim. But the best documentaries hide their agendas pretty well under balanced arguments and straight up facts. Unfortunately, What the Health, released in 2017, cranks up the food fear sirens to 11 while falling short on the balance and facts front. As a consequence, it's been heavily criticized by doctors, dietitians, and journalists alike. The documentary claims that most major health problems, from cancer to diabetes, are due to consumption of meat and dairy products. One such claim is that drinking cow's milk causes cancer. The reference studies that suggest this connection involved relatively small cohorts and openly admitted to the need for further investigation. On the other side of the milk bottle, several large cohort studies have found no evidence that milk causes cancer and some have even suggested that it can actually help avoid the disease. But by far the most exaggerated claim of the documentary is that eating one egg per day is as bad as smoking five cigarettes, due to the cholesterol content in eggs. The claim that consuming cholesterol leads to higher cholesterol levels in the blood and hence causes heart disease has been repeatedly disproven. You'd have to consume eggs at a Ron Swanson level to notice any impact at all. Give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Two-thirds of long-term smokers will die from smoking. The effects of eggs are not even slightly comparable. So scramble away. Number 8. An Inconvenient Truth Released in 2006, An Inconvenient Truth focuses on one of the biggest issues of the 21st century, climate change. A year after its release, a high court judge ruled that, while the film was educational and undeniably significant, it contained several key scientific errors. Most of these involved issues like the global bleaching of coral reefs, which the film attributed solely to human-caused global warming. While global warming likely contributes to problems like these, other factors like pollution have an equal or often greater role. Another of the most significant claims implied that either West Antarctica or Greenland will melt in the near future, causing a sea level rise of up to 20 feet. The judge ruled that this was distinctly alarmist, and while it is expected to occur, the expected time frame is centuries long. Similarly, Gore's claim that low-lying atolls in the Pacific were being hastily abandoned due to rising sea levels had no supporting evidence at all and seemed little more than a mode of manipulation. And the documentary's most moving scene references incidents of polar bears drowning, unable to find ice to shore up on. Unfortunately, this was also misrepresentative. The reports referenced actually indicated that four polar bears were found drowned due to a storm and had nothing at all to do with global warming. That's not to say it couldn't happen, but misrepresenting facts totally undermines the positive, truthful core of the documentary. Mr. Gore, next time, don't bend the truth. You'll end up in hot water again. Number 7. An Inconvenient Lie The skeptical counterpart to An Inconvenient Truth, 2007's The Great Global Warming Swindle, tells the other side of the climate change argument. 
This documentary aims to portray global warming as an alarmist issue solely designed to serve a political agenda. The documentary was riddled with incorrect, inaccurate, exaggerated, and outdated information. Most significantly, it attributed the increase in greenhouse gases to solar activity. This theory was based on a 1991 study, which supposedly found a correlation between our local star's cycle of sunspots and the Earth's temperature variations. It was soon concluded that the study had handled its data incorrectly and was unanimously dismissed. Either director-producer Martin Durkin missed this update or chose to ignore it to suit his own agenda as it formed the basis of most of his arguments. Speaking of agendas, Durkin's bias against environmentalists was well known from his previous works. 1997's Against Nature saw him criticizing environmentalists as irritating obstacles to personal freedom and economic growth. So it was no surprise that the 2007 film was widely criticized by the scientific community for its favoring of Durkin's agenda over facts. These critical voices included two of the scientists featured in the film, Carl Wantz and Igel Frist Christensen. Both stated that they'd been misled by the filmmakers and their work and viewpoints had been completely distorted and misrepresented. Here's the lesson. If you're going to twist people's words, don't let them see the film afterwards. Number 6. 13th Released in 2016, 13th is a documentary that makes the bold claim that slavery still exists in the modern USA. It argues that through social mechanisms like mass incarceration, the principles of slavery continue to operate on more subtle levels than we realize. While it certainly raises a few intriguing points, its arguments are undermined by a tendency to exaggerate and even fabricate facts. For example, without providing any sources, 13th claims that prison populations have exploded in the last decade, which goes against all available evidence suggesting an overall decrease it also claims that, while black men make up merely 6.5% of the US population, they account for 40.2% of the prison population. The 40.2% figure is, again, not backed up with any sources. While the actual number of around 33% is certainly disproportionate, this error really undermines a film claiming to expose hidden realities. While the film hits on some truths, it seems to prioritize getting your blood boiling over factual accuracy. Number 5. Super Size Me Released in 2004, Super Size Me put so many people off eating fast food that McDonald's changed its menu to include salads and other healthier options. While its outcomes were positive, the film fell short on authenticity. At the start of the film, director Morgan Spurlock established that he was in good health before he embarked on his month-long McDonald's-fueled mission. But in reality, Morgan himself admitted years later that he hadn't been sober for more than a week in 30 years. Morgan admitted to being an almost lifelong alcoholic, including while filming Super Size Me. This may just have had something to do with the doctor's mid-experiment assessment that Spurlock's consumption habits were pickling his liver, which was comparable to an alcoholic's after a binge. Because of this, any changes noted were undermined by the effects of high alcohol intake on Morgan's body. Plus, even if he were sober, one man is not a representative sample. Of course, no one's pretending that a McDonald's only diet is good for you, but unsurprisingly, alcoholism won't help. Number four, Bowling for Columbine. In 2002, controversial filmmaker Michael Moore released Bowling for Columbine, a documentary exploring the 1999 Columbine High School Massacre. For more, the shooting's root causes were America's lax gun laws and the pro-gun culture surrounding them. While Moore raises some important points, misleading statistics and inaccurate accounts of historical events muddy his arguments. In an early scene, Moore enters a bank to redeem an offer of a free gun with every new account. In very little time, the bank gives Moore the gun and he notes how shockingly easy it was. However, the film doesn't mention how the producers had already filled out the bulk of the paperwork and arranged for the gun to be ready on the day of filming. This was vital information as the bank's regulations required a month-long background check on anyone who applied. What's more, delivery of the gun could take weeks as usually the guns weren't even stored on site. Of course, it's still crazy that you can get a gun from a bank, but somehow that wasn't enough for Moore Later, the film claims America's annual gun murders number over 11,000, whereas official FBI figures place this number at approximately 8,800. The figure quoted by Moore was actually a combination of murders, self-defense, and police usage. But the film's most controversial claim is in its satirical cartoon, History of America section. The cartoon implies that the National Rifle Association emerged from the KKK. 
Even if it was purely satirical, it's an inaccurate joke, as the NRA was set up in New York by Union soldiers during the Civil War. Even ignoring this fact, the total lack of supporting evidence highlights how much Moore's personal agenda infiltrates the film, shifting it further away from the basic definitions of documentary. Number three, Bear Grylls, born Survivor? Anyone who's seen survivalist Bear Grylls shows knows about his abilities to live out in the wild. Employing his SAS trained survival skills to stay sheltered and warm in harsh climates and find food and water, survival is the key focus. But unfortunately, the survival on the edge aspect of Grill's shows like Born Survivor fell apart in 2007. A crew member let slip that, despite the appearance of living the true survivalist lifestyle, Grill's regularly stayed in hotel resorts during filming. From cozy lodges in the Sierra Nevada mountains to full-blown luxury resorts, nights spent on cold forest floors were few. This meant that Grill's desperate searches for food, no matter how gross, were a lie too as the day usually began and ended with a hearty catered meal. To Grill's credit, he publicly apologized for misleading fans in 2014, but it didn't prevent his shows losing some of their wonder and awe. Number two, Gasland. Gasland is a 2010 documentary focused on the controversial subject of fracking, which involves explosively injecting liquid into the earth to access oil or gas. The film's focus is upon the pollution caused by fracking, and in the midst of exploring the subject, one particularly alarming claim is made. The documentary reports that, in areas where fracking occurs, people are able to light their tap water on fire. The film conveniently fails to mention that there have been reports of this phenomenon since the 70s, long before fracking was prevalent in the featured areas. The phenomenon is usually due to naturally occurring methane in underground water reserves. Another section of Gasland notes the death of large numbers of fish in a nearby river and attributes their deaths to fracking practices. In truth, the fish had been wiped out by a bloom of toxic algae, which had thrived in the river thanks to pollution from a nearby coal mine. So while we can all appreciate pollution is bad and fracking has its own problems, falsely attributing causes to enhance an argument is not fracking cool, man. Number one, Cowspiracy. From global warming and deforestation to droughts and even murders, according to Cowspiracy, everything comes down to cows. If only it were so simple. The documentary's most notable errors span from a single claim, that global meat consumption is the biggest cause of climate change. Cowspiracy initially claims that animal agriculture is responsible for 18% of greenhouse gas emissions, but later suggests the impact has been drastically understated. The real worldwide figure, as asserted by Cowspiracy, may be closer to 51%. Unfortunately, this latter number comes from a single, unreliable study which was not only riddled with errors, but was eventually discredited by its own author's amendments. Indeed, even the initial claim of 18% was based on incorrect data and was later corrected to around 14% by the UN. This is still a greater percentage than that of the entire transport industry combined. So why cling to outlandish claims when established facts are disturbing enough? No one's disputing that the meat industry has some pretty awful effects on our environment, with much deforestation of the Amazon occurring to make space for livestock feed crops. But as with many of the documentaries I've mentioned, it's better to use facts and get to the meat of it rather than chewing the cut of deception. Did you fall in the trap of any of these dishonest docs? Do you know of any more documentaries that lie to audiences? Let me know in the comment section below and we may make a video on it. Thanks for watching.